This is Lazo's Week in Review for June 8th, 2019. And what a week it was. It was all chock full of whining and complaining. Not from me, which is unusual, but from perceived adults, apparently, who uh, just can't take life and people criticizing them. It's amazing that we're in 2019. And someone says something negative towards you and you have to, I don't know, throw your purse, throw a drink. I don't know. It's whatever it is. It's, it's, it's pretty, it's pretty bad. So my first video was on June 3rd. It's uh, socialism is okay in San Francisco. Right. That's because John Hickenlooper got, um, <laughs> John Hickenlooper got all, um, he was just saying, hey, guys, you know, if we're going to, you know, be Democrats, why don't we uh, not, you know, push the socialism, socialist ideals? It's not a good way. Boo, you suck. We want socialism. Boo. He kind of took it. So, I mean, he has no chance of being president. But it's funny, though, that you're in San Francisco. People are in the streets. But it's A-OK to, you know. Say socialism's cool when socialism's track record is pretty goddamn bad, but you know, that's just me. Am I right? <sighs> so the other one was last weekend uh, when I reported on this uh, from Chicago, fifty people were shot. Almost no media coverage, and the weekend before that, during Memorial Day, I think it was like forty-seven. So that was like a record record week. And this was on the heels of the Virginia Beach shooting, where unfortunately uh, 12 souls were perished during some some guys. And we don't even hear about that that much anymore because the guy, I guess, didn't fit the uh, media narrative of being white and angry and Christian, I guess, which not as much as far as I know, it doesn't happen. But as I digress, so the media doesn't care about 50 people being shot in Chicago because that's what's supposed to happen. And so it's like normal. It's like waking up in the morning. Oh, they have breakfast. Oh, 50 people were shot? Nah. Don't care. And 50 of those, I think, 50, 10 of those 50 were killed, I think, if I remember that correctly. So, next one. This is where it's starting to get even more crazy. This is, this is, on, the heel, this is on the heels of um, the Carlos Maza thing. But don't, don't worry, we're going to get to that, unfortunately. Google and Facebook hit, hit a major correction in their uh, stock prices. Uh, the, the the government basically say that they're gonna they're gonna investigate them for uh, federal trade commissions violations and other things. So their price their price uh, market cap, if you will, they didn't really lose any money. Technically, uh, took a real big hit, a real big hit, and um, yeah, they're they're not gonna be going out of business anytime soon. They're already they've already got their tentacles in every facet of our life, so they ain't going anywhere. So here we go. On June fourth, Carlos Maza is thin-skinned and endorses violence against those who he does not agree with. Now we can go on and on about this, and we don't need to, but. <laughs> Carlos Maza, at Gay Wonk on Twitter, considers himself a sexist pig. Or a sexist pig, no. <laughs> Wouldn't that be funny? But no, he's a quote-unquote Marxist pig. Okay? And he also calls Tucker Carlson a white supremacist without any evidence. Now, he's repeatedly, numerously, on numerous occasions, called for violence against people he does not agree with. Milkshake him at any... And then he basically, he sort of said, he goes, well, that was just, you didn't know the context. No, you, you wanted violence against those you don't agree with. So this is all in conjunction with the Steven Crowder thing. He got mad at him because he called him, I'm not going to say it, but you can find it. And he wasn't, see, Crowder's a comedian, and he was just using what the same words that Carlos Maza used on himself. So, but you can't do that if you're not gay, apparently. And you can't criticize anybody who's gay 
or how Steven Crowder calls it. Let me see if I remember it. The distinguished and lovely gentleman that is of Latin descent who works at Vox, who's gay but is bold and beautiful or something like that. <laughs> oh, my God. Then it gets even worse. The next day, far-left Carlos Maza fails to silence Steven Crowder. Now, what happens was that YouTube came out and said, um, well, some of the words are hurtful. He didn't violate our terms of services. Well, that pissed off to, to Carlos Maza. He threw he threw some Merlot at the wall, cried for about an hour, got up and did like a, a bunch of just goes, so what? He be harassing me. And he wasn't harassing him. So he basically, he... Uh, Bitched and moaned more, and then YouTube had to step in. And this is where the ad, or the adpocalypse 2.0, or what I do, what I like to call it, the, the Vox Pocalypse. I like to call it the Vox Adpocalypse. The Vox Pocalypse sounds way better, in my opinion. So basically, that same day, YouTube to remove hateful comment and recent blog post. Adpocalypse 2.0 has started. And it did. And it affected a ton of people. Mostly people on the right. And also people who like to uh, record nature sounds. Um, do text to meme. Who've got like you know millions of followers. They were hit for some reason. And then I commented on the next day. This is what the far left authoritarians do. The anatomy of Vox Apocalypse. I basically just kind of said hey here's what they do. They don't like you. You get start getting too big and they want to like crush the competition. Then they start brigading people and start going after your um, advertisers and and just, just trying to destroy your life regardless. The scorched earth, how Tim Pool put it. Then it gets even more worse. YouTube's animosity towards the political right, keep your cards close to your chest. I basically did this video to say, hey, look. If you're going to do these videos, you have to watch what you say now. It is the most imperative that we all watch and sort of like take a deep breath. And you can't, apparently, according to the terms of service for, for YouTube, you can't criticize the illegal immigration. I'm going to I'm gonna say that again slowly so you understand how stupid that sounds. According to terms of service for, for YouTube... You cannot criticize illegal, quote-unquote, illegal immigration. What's next? You can't uh, criticize illegal murder? The freak, man. So, I don't know. I don't. There's, that's what I was trying to put out. Is I don't know what to say. What you can and can't say anymore, apparently. Because they change their goddamn rules every five seconds. To, to benefit them, not you, of course. Just like the government, you just. And I'm re realizing this more more recently. These people, these tech monopolies, they're just like the government. They change the rules to benefit themselves, not the people who use their stuff. And same thing with the government. They change the rules not to benefit the people, but to benefit the government. And you're going to say, "Well, the government is people." Yeah, but your person words here. So, the next piece. Ian Shear of CNET writes a biased hit piece about, quote, angry gamers. This one was one of my favorite ones, and I got a lot of traction on it. <clears throat> so, Ian Shear of CNET started attacking... He basically... His, his whole premise or his whole thesis for his article was that angry gamers are driving likes and subscriptions to these people. He calls them angry. I call them people who don't take shit from game companies put out crappy products like Fallout 76. But no, to Ian Shear, no, those people are angry. So it's no, you're not allowed to be angry. And you can't criticize anything because if you criticize something, even calmly and rationally with evidence, apparently to Ian Shear, you're bad, you're angry, and you should be, and your advertisers should be attacked and, and notified by your behavior and that's what this douche canoe did he went to jerry jeremy hamley's of the quartering some of his advertisers that went on that advertised before his videos 
He goes, do you have a comment on these angry gamers? And what happened? You guessed it. They pulled their, some of their ads. And so, obviously, um, as I said in that video, he, uh, Jeremy basically said, well, I'm going to contact my... I didn't know he had Bill Richardson, the half-Asian lawyer that, of the same guy of um, Steven Crowder. That guy's a that guy's awesome. Um, so, I don't know. They, he might have a real uphill battle for that one. But I wish he would at least go after him legally, of course. Not illegally, YouTube minders. Legally, through lawyers and the court system. God, you guys, you YouTube minders, man. You're, you're just so, oh, no, he said something crazy. But the left side did it, too. Well, well, forget them. This guy seems like he's libertarian. Oh, no. We need to get him and shut him down. Bite me. Anyways, in my last video I did yesterday, uh, I'm protesting Hollywood and big tech peacefully and legally. Meaning by that is there's caveats to that because my wife is not always on board with this. So I can't exactly just, you know, say, hey, honey, I'm not going to go see Dark Phoenix because, uh, you know, I'm protesting. She told me to shut up and come to the movie with my son and her. And she would just say, "Just shut up. I don't. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not doing this. What you're doing, I don't care." So there's caveats to that, but there's ways of legally bypassing Hollywood. Well, legally is a gray area, but let's just say one legal way to do it, do it is go on Wikipedia and find out to read the plot. All right, I don't need to see the movie now. You know what happens, and you wait for three months, and you can either. Buy the Blu-ray, watch it on Netflix, etc. Or, and that's the other part two of that, is just to finally get rid of Netflix. And again, a caveat to that, I can't exactly get rid of Netflix because my wife likes it. There's also other ways of doing it that are gray area type of things I'm not going to mention, but you're smart out there. You, you somehow signed on to the internet in some capacity through AOL or whatever. You... you the internet's been around for over 25 years. I think you know a thing or two about that. But, so what's up for next week? I don't know. Um, I assume this whole adpocalypse is not going to go down. Carlos Maza is still going to complain and bitch and moan and whine and cry and call onto YouTube and call the vlog. Grow up. Carlos Maza, grow up. I'm just so sick and tired of adults complaining. So, there's my weekend review for June 8th, 2019. I'll see you all next week. If there is a next week, hopefully there is. I don't know if the Cthulhu is going to come out of the sky, but we can always hope or not hope or whatever. <laughs>